Thank you, Johnny. Uh, simply about me, I'm Joseph. I came from Prague, and I like beer, as you can see. Maybe also computer games. Uh, if I ask you a question, if, if I tell you some, let's say, not a trick, but le let's call it a way how to uncover uh, information to somebody on LinkedIn, w would you be interested in that? Sure. Uh, if I tell you a way how to uncover information identity to somebody who is not on LinkedIn, who has maybe negligible digital footprint, would you be interested in that? Yeah. Sure. Uh, Connie was describing here how to get a list of, uh, for example, one team of account managers. Uh, maybe you would be interested in how to get maybe full database of uh, employees of some company, which it might look like this. Uh, for those of you who are skilled in sourcing, you should be able to maybe in five minutes to find out what uh, this company is. I can give you a small hint. It starts with IB and it has three letters. Uh, so how, to, how, to, how do I, or I mean, friend of mine, of course, uh, got this database. <laughs> Let's see what can be the ways how to get it. From my perspective, we as a sorcerers, and you will see my background, which is basically not recruitment, not nothing like that. Uh, we are modern social engineers in the ways that we are eager to get these hacks. If there is online service where you could download the full database of people of this company or any company, I guess you would do this. Be honest, you, you would do that. So we usually use a term publicly available data. If it's online, for us, it's a publicly available data. So for example, imagine this device. It's the HDTV USB dongle. You put it into your computer and you are basically able to watch TV. But if you have some skills, you can also trace who is calling to whom and what SMSs are here in the air. So. Uh, if I create a service where I put this online and you will use it, you would call that publicly available data. <laughs> so as you can see, we have tools and we are basically able uh, to get this information anyhow. And we don't much think if it's uh, against rules or not. This guy is called the top one hacker in the world, but the problem is that he was jailed for five years. And another, I think, three years he wasn't able to touch either a uh, telephone or a computer. So at least he had time to write this book and then another one. Uh, of course, uh, I have this book signed from him and maybe it's, it's kind of interaction what my background is. Okay, so let's go black hat. Uh, I need to emphasize this that some of these things might not be legal in your country. So uh, let's do the first thing. I will choose somebody uh, from the audience. I already so one victim, oh, I mean target, <laughs> I, I, mean, I mean a candidate. Uh, I'm going right here. That's you. Uh, can you tell us what's your name? Julie. Hello, Julie. My name is Joseph. I like beer. Uh, would you be willing to give me your mobile phone number? Mine. Yeah. You, you can just write it down so not everyone has your number. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly that. <laughs> okay, so let's move on. I have the number. So that was it. That was it. <laughs> so I will do something here on my second mobile. Let's wait a, mo let's wait a moment. And Julie, please, uh, can you take your mobile phone outside the back, or if you have it? And just tell us when your mobile phone starts to ring. It's ringing. Can you tell us the number who is, who is calling? It's, uh, so press 3-6-3-4-9-4-9-3-6. come on. Come on, Balash, I just asked for a number and you are... Okay, so you can see, uh, can you just, uh, Balash, can you, can you say that this is not your phone? You have your phone there, and I can promise you that this, this conversation 
will not be on your Randstad bill. Uh, <laughs> not only number of, for example, Balash or anybody. By the way, you, you have the mobile phone on your LinkedIn, so I just use that. Uh, before LinkedIn, if we need it to, for example, make the org chart of the company, but I, I don't mean for the sourcing purpose, but I mean for some other, maybe, uh, industrial espionage or something like that, we need it uh, to do a technique which is called dumpster diving or trash diving, which means actually to go to the company, uh, to the trash, and find out some printer outputs where are where is something, some names, and so on. So, of course, this for the real social engineers, this is the game changer. The LinkedIn is game changer. You can, of course, instead of, for example, calling from a hidden number, uh, you can call uh, from some number. Uh, if you want to call, for example, if you are sourcing people uh, across Europe, and you can have, for example, Hungarian number uh, over the Skype, but this is much easier. I just put there the number, hit call, and it's there. So if you, call, if you are calling a foreign candidate, you can have a local number of, of that country. Okay, next thing is what I call era-based sourcing. Maybe I should ask before, is there somebody from KPN or maybe T-Mobile? Vodafone, Dutch telecommunication office. Okay, so <laughs> not a problem. Why era-based sourcing? Uh, why uh, basically to, why to care? Uh, some of you here received this message. Can you raise your hands who received this? There, there are just few of, few of you. Yeah, over there, over there. Okay, uh, don't worry, that was, that was actually me. And, uh, <laughs> We can see that these people, we, we didn't want to bless it to all of you because it's also jamming your, your cell phone so you would not be able to do the calls. Uh, but basically, I can, we, we have here, I don't know, seven, eight uh, numbers. We can see where are you from. So there is at least uh, one guy from France. So we can see Estonia, Israel, uh, and we can see your original operators. And we also can see your mobile phone like your type of your mobile phone. So this works, uh, this solution you can see right here on the first desk, uh, works uh, basically on a way that we are able, th that's why I call it area-based sourcing, we are able to push you SMS message over the GSM network regardless if we know your number or not. You can see here we don't know your number. The, the IMZI, it's, it's the factory number of your mobile phone and, and SIM card. So we don't know your real mobile phones, but still we are able to push you the SMS. I don't like this macro data. Of course, we can see that there are 4.3 billion unique mobile phone subscribers, which is definitely more than people online, which is definitely more than people on Facebook or people on LinkedIn. Uh, if if I, I, I did a break, breakdown for the Czech Republic, which is a country I know, and we can have more precise numbers, uh, over 10 million uh, inhabitants, 1 million on, on LinkedIn, 4.4 uh, million active users, 7.7 uh, .7 million online users, but you can see 14 million SIM cards. So even if you are not on LinkedIn, Facebook, online, you definitely have a SIM card. My mother, uh, who is not able to handle a computer, has two or three mobile phones. I don't know why, but uh, <laughs> she simply has. And publicly available data. If you open opencellid.org, this is the building where we are right now, and we can see these Points here are the mobile BTSs, the, basically the antennas of the mobile operator. So we can see there is here on the roof, there is one T-Mobile operator, uh, BTS, two KPNs, more, uh, more uh, T-Mobile, and here is one Vodafone. You can see I clicked on that and I can see more information about that. Uh, basically, uh, this works uh, on a way that we are able with this device, we are able to fake the BTS. So basically, we become the operator, and your mobile phone is stupid. Again, I, I'm saying the, these protocols are from 6070, so your mobile phone will simply connect to us, and we can do basically whatever we want with your cell phone. Uh, the, uh, this is uh, Motorola, which maybe you wonder why this old uh, crappy mobile, but this Mo Motorola is nice, where you can, you can put there in the headset phone, uh, you can put there a serial link and you can basically, uh, we can push a software to the Motorola. So we, what you can see on the display, it's not the real software in, in the Motorola. And with this uh, Motorola, we are able to scan the channels 
here which the mobile operator uses. So there is basically here is the table. Uh, there is a table of all channels in the world, uh, or in the world, in, in, in each country. And for example, Vodafone has few channels and so on. And based uh, with this motor, we are able to handle which, is, which has the strongest signal and so on. This is the device you can see here. And you can see it's homemade. It's, it's like everything here is homemade. So you can see the price we basically, you, you need to put into. So the main part is this main board. It's MZ Catcher, $650 uh, from USA. Smaller embedded computer, Android C1, $35. Small antennas, uh, uh, 10 bucks. But of course, if you would like to have a bigger impact, you need a sector antennas, which we weren't allowed to, to take it over the airport. airport. So uh, <laughs> we just took these small ones and and there is also a GPS antenna which uh, you need for the calibration. And this is the CNC cutter we cut the chassis on, so you can see it's actually homemade. So, of course, again, how you can use that, approaching people at events like this, uh, approaching people of targeted companies, so maybe once you see some, some suspicious van in front of your company, <laughs> maybe we are there just pushing the messages to your employees and it, it, it's a matter of maybe 10 minutes, so we can be like 10 minutes, push the messages with the sector antenna, we, we can be pretty precise. So now we have, we have antenna which is broadcasting to all directions, but you can have a sector antenna broadcasting just some angle, and then it's very precise. Uh, you can, of course, for example, have this device at your company and everybody who is passing you by, you can, you can push them some message or voicemail. Based on that, you can track habits of these people because you can see that you already uh, the guy who you traced one week ago, he's, he's here again around your company and you can send him oh, something like, I don't know, I can see that you are here for the third time, so I'm sending you this. <laughs> yep. Uh, so here, for example, I didn't know that, uh, that Netherlands has four mobile operators, KPN, T-Mobile, Vodafone and Beer Mobile. So that's basically what you can see on your, on your devices. Wi-Fi, you know Wi-Fi, simple. Uh, maybe some of you noticed that there are two Wi-Fi's here. There is the Wi-Fi with the 2015, but there is also SOSU Free. The SOSU Free, it's our Wi-Fi. And uh, <laughs> who, some of you who connected, and we know that tens of you connected to that, uh, saw this on the screen, and you put there your email address, uh, hit access internet and nothing happened. You were asked to use a different Wi-Fi. Here we have the list of people. So, imagine. Imagine if this is some, I, again, repeat the Java meetup. I have nice list of Java people. Uh, now I have nice list of people from sourcing. So, uh, simple device. Raspberry, it's, maybe you know the Raspberry, it's the, it's the small embedded computer used everywhere now. It's very popular. Uh, simple USB Wi-Fi wi card and antenna. It's a question of a few bucks. You can see it under the, under the desk. So again, Possible sourcing scenarios, collecting uh, contact information to people, identities and conferences, meetups, basically anywhere. Beacon technology, which is now very popular. Uh, do you know what Beacon is? Do, do you use Beacon somewhere? Again, it's, it's area-based. It, it reacts where, uh, to the point where you are. Uh, so wh what you can do with this is we can call it a more sophisticated business card. So imagine... I will, know, I will have no business cards, I will have just the beacon in the pocket or in the back, and I will meet somebody, and uh, he will ask me, can I have your business card? I will say, no, I don't have business card, but open your iPad, well, this is iPad, but it can be iPhone, Android, and look at your push messages, and you can see here, in the push messages, uh, it's going over the Chrome, it will be, by default, it will be in the new Android, so if you have a new Android, or you will have the new Android, this is like there by default. 
So I can push you a link to my, for example, here, LinkedIn profile. You will click on it. You will get to my LinkedIn profile without, basically, I would be telling, spelling you something and so on. So this is the beacon technology and, and usage. And this is the real future. Sensors, beacons, this is, this is future. This is part of the Internet of Things. If you heard the term Internet of Things, this is it. I would, again, rather emphasize, be aware, some of these techniques might be uh, illegal in your country. <laughs> I, I know that, for example, the calling for the spoof number, for the f fake number, in the US, it's legal, unless you use it for a legal purpose. In the Europe, it's illegal on its own, so you are not able to, uh, to use it anyway. Yeah, that's it.